In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pattern from a repeating unit. I'm in a new file. Um, the file already has a title block. I'm going to go to Model Space. All right. In Model Space, um, I've already created a series of layers and I've set my layer to layer number one. All right. Now what I'm going to do is first make this unit that gets repeated. Um, the beginning of the unit will be something called a donut. I use donuts to make solid filled circles, not necessarily a donut with a hole in the middle. Um, you'll find this donut tool on the home ribbon on the draw panel, and it's this uh, icon right here. Okay, so it says to specify the inside diameter of the donut, and it defaults to 0.5, but I really don't want any kind of uh, inside hole in my donut, so what I'm going to do is change this to zero. All right, and it's also asking me for the diameter of the donut, and this is just going to be a rather small little dot. I'm going to make it 0.125. Press enter, and then, you know, for this particular unit, I want to start with it at zero zero on the coordinate system. So I'm going to type in zero comma zero and then enter. Okay. And I'll enter out of that. Now, if I zoom in much closer here, I can see this little teeny tiny um, donut that I've created. All right, now the next step to this um, is going to be to make this little donut into a block, okay? Now, generally speaking, when you make a block, instead of being on a particular layer, you want to be on layer zero. So I'm going to click on zero here. All right, so I've set my layer to layer zero, and now I'm going to make this, this little dot into a block. I type in block, select it. All right, now I'm going to give a name to this. I'm going to call it unit one. And I'm also going to establish a pick point. So the pick point will be the point about which you could insert this block. So I'm going to click on pick point and I'm going to uh, choose the center of this. Now I could use the object snaps to include a center pick point, but since I know that the center of this particular donut is at zero, zero, I'm just going to input those, those two values, zero comma zero, enter. Right, and then I'm going to select the donut. There we go. Pick it, press enter, and I'm going to say OK. So now I have this block, and I could insert as many of these as I'd like. If I was to type in insert, I should see that this block is now inside my file, and it should be the only one. Right, if I was to say OK, I would be able to place other blocks similar to the one that I've made. Okay, I don't need that one, so I'm going to erase it. All right, now we're working on making a pattern, and this pattern is going to be more complicated than just a series of dots. But the principle is this, that you make the block, you generate the pattern, and then because you've made this block, you can make changes to it, and it will be updated in the entire pattern. All right, now, to make this sort of repetitive pattern, I'm going to use the Array tool. You'll find the Array tool on the Home ribbon. I'm going to select Rectangular Array, and then I'm going to make a window around that little donut, and I'm going to press Enter. All right, now, as you can see, it's generated a bunch of of these donuts, but they're very closely spaced, and it's because these values for my array are quite small. I'm going to start off by making a series of columns in rows. I'll just change the, the values that were already assigned. Okay, and you can see that it's it's already generated more of these, but I'm also going to change the spacing between these. Um, these donut blocks. 
I'll make them one unit between each of them. Okay, so what we should have here is the distance from the center of this donut to the next one is one, and likewise in the vertical direction. All right, now, as I mentioned, this is about making a pattern, and instead of just making a pattern of dots, we're going to make um, some more elaborate geometry that will be updated in this, in this pattern. Okay, now to make changes to that unit one block that I made, I'm going to use the block editor. You can get to the block editor by going to the insert tab and selecting it from the ribbon. You can also type in BE and it will bring up the block editor command. Click on that and there you can see there's the unit one block that I already defined. Okay, now when I go in here, it's it's quite large on the screen. I want to zoom out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is type in Z for zoom. And I'm going to use, you can see these, this option right here, enter a scale factor. I'm going to put in 0.1x or 0.1 times, and it should make it 10% smaller. Right? And I can do that again, 0.1x. Right, and make adjustments as necessary. I'm going to close this. I don't need it. Close this as well. I'm going to go back to the home ribbon, and I'm going to make my current layer layer number two. Okay. Now, the first shape that I'm going to make is going to be a circle. Um, and actually, I think what I'll do is I'll turn off some of these other object snaps. I can turn them back on later. Endpoint node intersection. Okay. I'm going to go to circle and it's going to find the center of the circle and I want to give a radius of one. Okay. So now I can zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to go and I'm going to add uh, the quadrant object snap because I want to make a small circle at the quad points. The quad points in a circle are here, 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 and here. So I'll go back to my circle command and you can see it has found the quad point. Uh, I'm going to make the radius of this circle 0.125 uh, and I've realized that I've made it too large so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the diameter of that circle. Um, if I click on the circle and then I right click I can select the properties window here. It will open up the properties window. And if I scroll down towards the bottom here, I'm going to find that there is an option for the diameter. I want the diameter to be 0.125. The radius should be 0.0625. Okay, so you can see that it updates that automatically. So you can use the properties window to change all kinds of characteristics of objects. And I can close that. All right, now I'm going to make an array of this circle about the center here. I want to have six of these. So I'm going to click on Polar Array. I'm going to select that circle, press Enter. I'm going to snap to the center of my array. That will be the base point. And you can see already that six items are the default. And I'll just accept that. All right, now we're not quite done with this geometry, but what I want to do now is close the block so you can see what kinds of change, what the changes have been to the pattern. All right, so you can see that it's not only changed the first unit that I started with, but it's updated all of them. And I'll go back into the block editor and I'll continue to make some changes to this. Okay, if I go back to close this, go back to the home ribbon, I'm going to pick, make my current layer layer number three. And I am then going to construct a polygon, a six-sided polygon or a hexagon. All right, the center of my polygon will be the center of my donut. Right, I'm going to inscribe this polygon inside the circle, and I'll come right over here and click at the quadrant point. Right. 
And when we close the block editor, you'll see that it's updated both of these changes or all of these changes. So just to sort of summarize, the whole idea with working with these arrays and blocks, um, at least for the purposes of generating patterns, is that you save yourself a considerable amount of time if you're careful in defining the base unit that gets repeated. And the other nice thing is that you can go and change the block and it will update in all of the blocks of your pattern. Um, so other things to keep in mind, after you've drawn the objects within the block, you want to make the block while you're on layer zero, as I am right here. Um, and when you make the array, the same thing goes. Before you make the array, change your current layer to layer zero.